Hi everyone. In the previous video, I showed you that I had released a jewelry CAD library for Rhino. I showed you where to get it, how to download and install it, and it comes as a free version and also as a paid version. The only difference between the free and paid versions is the number of gym models and the number of materials. Other than that, they're the same. In this video, I want to show you how to uh, get gemstones from the library into your scene. And there's two basic ways that you can do that. You can manually drag and drop the gemstones in, or you can use a script to bring them in. So first, we'll go over the manual method. And to do that, you will go to the library tab, go to your library. Now, I have four versions of the library installed here. I have for Rhino 5 and Rhino 7. So there's two different versions of Rhino, and there's also the paid and free version for each so that that makes a total of four so don't worry about that but uh, i'm going to click on the paid version for rhino 7 here this is the the main library folder you would click on gems and then choose the type you want i think we'll go with fancy in this case double click so and you double click by the way so you double click on gems you double click on fancy okay and uh, then you select the shape you want. We'll go with oval. We'll just go ahead and drag that in. Typically, you're going to want to use the import file option. So not open. Open file will replace whatever file you're working on. Uh, and so you typically want to import the file and just bring it into the scene. All right, so there it brought it in. Uh, it comes in at 10 millimeters wide. All of the gemstones are 10 millimeters wide in the X direction and then their lengths can vary depending on the gemstone model and the heights. The heights can vary as well. If you want the cutter, you would back out and then go to the cutters folder and grab the cutter of the same shape, okay? Now, if you want to scale this, uh, so that's, that's not too difficult. There is that, you know, it's a little annoying that you have to back out and go to the cutters and drag that in as well, but it's not too bad. But it does get a little more difficult, uh, the manual method, when you want to resize the gemstone. So uh, let's say we've measured our oval. Uh, you'll rarely work with a 10 millimeter wide stone. Let's say that uh, we measured our oval and it is four millimeters wide. Okay, so uh, I, I want this to scale down proportionately. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab the, I'm gonna hold down shift and click on the scale handle for the width, okay? And I want to type in the width that I want, which is, we'll say four millimeters, divided by the width that it is, which is 10 millimeters, okay? So you, you type the, 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 the width that you want divided by the width that it is. I'm gonna go into the front view for just a moment and pick that back up to right there. Okay, so it scaled it all down proportionately. So it's now four millimeters wide and proportionally it has you know, has a proportionate length and a proportionate height. Now let's say we want to also scale it uh, along its length. We'll go into the top viewport here. Let's go to drafting and measure it first. We need to know what the current length is. Okay, it's uh, 5.97. I think I must have snapped on something a little off because it should be six, exactly. <laughs> I'll get this in a second. There we go. So it's six millimeters long. Okay. But let's say we want to scale it down uh, to say uh, 6.3. Okay, we'll scale it up to 6.3. So you select the gemstone and cutter and you click on the scale handle in this direction. But don't hold down shift this time. We don't want it to proportionately scale. We want the width to stay four this time. So you type the length that you want, 6.3, divided by the length that it is, which is 6. Okay, so now it's 6.3. We can do the same thing for the height. First, we need to find out how tall it is. It's 2.45. Let's say that uh, ours is 2.3. So you would select it, uh, click on the height scale here and type the, the height that you want, which is 2.3, divided by the height that it is, which is 2.45, okay? So now it's 2.3 millimeters tall. 
So that's how you get it to be the dimensions that you want. And that's the manual method where you drag and drop it in using the import function. And that's how you would scale it uh, to the appropriate size. I'm just going to select this and drag it off to the side here. And now we'll go through the script method. So I have my script uh, here as a button under the uh, solid tools. Okay, I'll show you uh, how the scripting works first and then I'll show you how to set up scripting. Okay, so let's do all this with scripting now. So I'm going to click on the gym loader button. I'll pick the style of gemstone I want, which is fancy. We'll go with the oval. Okay, we can include our cutter or not, right? So we could choose to not have a cutter or choose to have a cutter. We'll go ahead and uh, have a cutter. And we could set the width or we could uh, accept the default. Uh, this first time around, I'm just going to accept the default for the width, the length, and the height. Okay, so you can see it's come in at 10 millimeters uh, wide. This is just like dragging and dropping it in, basically. Okay, I'm going to delete that, though, and we'll do this again. And this time, we will set the width. So we want it to be 4 millimeters wide. Okay, I'm not. I'm going to go ahead and accept the default length and the default height. The default for the length and the height are proportionate to the width. So if you set the width and you accept the default for the length, the length will be proportionate to the width. And the same with the height, okay? So this is exactly the same as when we first did our scale down. I'll, I'll drag this in over here. So this is just the cutter. Oops, oops. And it's uh, it's you know it's 10 millimeters wide. We held down shift and, and typed in four divided by 10. Okay, so this is giving us the same the same result here. All right, it's uh, it's lower, but if we look at it from the top, you can see it's the same size. Okay. Now we'll do the final one where we'll, we'll set the length and the, we'll set the width, the length, and the height. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We want it four millimeters wide. I think it was 6.3 millimeters long and 2.3 millimeters tall, right? Okay, so if we look at this from the top, I'll draw a line going across the top and bottom you can see that's the same length if we look at it from the front it should be the same height okay so the scripting is just so, so much easier uh, to, to get the gems in and get them at, to the size that you want okay so I'll now show you how to set this up so that you can use it as well so that's the one the one drawback is that it takes a little bit of setup so what's really going on here when we click on this button, we are running a command called run Python script. Okay, so you could just type that in into the command line like that. When you hit enter, it pulls up this file dialog which allows you to navigate to the script that you want to run. So it's already here uh, just because I've already visited this place in uh, practice runs on this video. So then you would double click on the script that you want to run and it would run it. Okay. So that's what's really happening when we click on this button. So what we're going to do is, uh, and I've done this on solid tools, but you could do this on any tab that you want. You can also create a new tab, but you would only have this one button in it, right? So if, if uh, we were going to create more scripts for, for Jewelry CAD and have several buttons, it might be a good idea to create a new custom tab. But since we've only got one button, I'm just going to go ahead and put it on the Solid Tools tab. But like I said, you can pick any tab you want. If you want to put it on the Standard tab, you can put it there. You can also put it on multiple tabs. You don't have to only put it on one. But I'm going to put it mine on the Solid Tools tab. So what you do is you click on the tab that you want to put the script on. And you come over here to like a blank space uh, where you know of the toolbar and right click. And then click on... Uh, First, let's add a separator, okay? So click New Separator. That'll draw a little line there. If you want, you can add a second separator, okay? If you would like to have two lines, which is what uh, Rhino does over here. It does the Boolean options, and it does two separators to give an extra kind of separation there. 
So I'll leave that up to you. You can put one or two separators. Right click again after these separators and click on new button. Okay, the first thing we'll do is establish the icon and we'll do that by clicking edit right here. It'll give you, uh, it'll pull up this icon editor, but we don't want to mess with that. We just want to come to file, import bitmap to fit. And I have included the icon in the library. So navigate to the library. So I have my library on my D drive. I'm going to navigate to the library and double click on it. And then once in the library, I'll double click on the images folder. And here is the gym icon. Okay. And then click open. You see it's brought it in, we'll just click OK, and now that is our icon done. Then uh, leave this where it is, inherit appearance from tab, and then come here to text, and we'll type in gym loader, or you can type in whatever you want. This is going to be the name of the button. Now you have the ability to set uh, a command for a left click on the button and a command for a right click on the button. We're not going to worry about putting a right click command okay so we're only going to work over here with a left click uh, for the tooltip I'm just going to type gym loader again so this is what you'll see when you hover over the button and then for the command we're going to type run Python script you need to type it in exactly like that capital R U N no space capital P Y T H O N no space capital S C R I P T now we want to do a couple of things. We want to click the home button, and actually I'll just I'll just delete the whole thing. Okay, so we're going to start from scratch. We first want to put an underscore. Okay, the underscore is telling Rhino that this command is going to be in English. That way it will work even if you have set up your library. I mean, uh, even if you have Rhino set up to use some other language. Okay, whatever your language is, you might have Rhino set up to use that. But uh, this underscore tells Rhino the next command is in English. So go ahead and use that no matter what language you have set Rhino up to use. Okay, now we also want to type a dash. All right, now the purpose of the dash is to suppress any dialogues that the command would normally run. So normally, run Python script wants to give us a file dialog so we can go and choose the file. But we don't want a file dialog we want to just tell it the file to choose okay so you want to type an underscore and then a dash and then you're going to type the command run Python script just like that you're going to hit space and now we need to type in the name of the file well you probably don't know the f you have to type the full path and you probably don't know it so go to a file explorer uh, go to wherever you have your library. So mine is in drive D, but you can go to wherever yours is. We'll click on the library. Double click on it rather. Then we'll double click on scripts. And then we will, uh, we've got, we can see where, where the gym loader is, but we don't need that. We need up here. So come up here and right click and click on copy address. Okay, once you've done that, the address, the, the path will be in your clipboard. Go back to Rhino and then just come here and paste it with Control V. Okay, now we need to type a backspace and then the name of the script, which is Jim underscore loader dot py. Okay, so type that in and then click OK. And that is it. That's your script. So now when we click on this button, uh, it goes ahead and runs. We'll do a cushion this time. And we'll bring it in at default size. Alright, so there you go. That's how you uh, can manually import gemstones into the scene or also how you can set up and use the script to bring gemstones into the scene through the Jewelry Cat library. And if you want more information on you know, where to get the library and how to download and install it, that's all in the previous video. Thank you everyone for watching and I hope to see all of you in future videos.